Here's an example of one warm up you can do before practice or competition and should only take 15 to 20 minutes. If you would like to see other examples of exercises or full exercise programs, please visit our YouTube channel, Adapted Sports Injury Prevention. If you experience pain during any of these exercises, we advise you to stop. Each exercise can be modified accordingly based on each person's limitations. The first set of exercises are two mobility exercises. Mobility is extremely important in wheelchair tennis in order to prevent injuries and give you maximum power behind your swings. If you experience pain during any of these exercises, we advise you to stop. Each exercise can be modified accordingly based on each person's limitations. The first exercise is a pec stretch. In order to stretch these muscles, you are going to position your chair next to a fence or pole. You will place your arm and elbow in a 90-90 position and rotate in and away from your arm to make the stretch more dynamic. Dynamic stretches are good to do before a practice or a game. We will perform this stretch for a minute each side with 3-5 to five second holds. The next exercise is called net twist. For this exercise, face the net and grab on with both hands. Then rotate your trunk and hips in both directions. Do this exercise for 10 repetitions, rotating to each side. In today's workout, there are three strengthening exercises. Unless otherwise noted, each exercise is done for two sets of eight to 12 repetitions. If you have difficulty stabilizing yourself during any of the following exercises due to a lack of core activation, you can complete the exercise one arm at a time while using your other hand on the chair to help stabilize yourself. You should perform all of these strengthening exercises at an RPE between 12 to 15. If the athlete identifies the intensity of the exercise below an 11 on the RPE scale, the exercise should be progressed to something more difficult. If the athlete identifies the exercise as above 15, then the exercise should be regressed. The first strengthening exercise is the posterior chain row complex. This exercise is performed with a TheraBand. The wheelchair will be positioned facing toward the fence with the chair locked or blocked in front to prevent rolling. There are two ways this exercise can be performed. For the first method, the TheraBand is attached at the level of the shoulders. The athlete will start by performing a high row, move into shoulder external rotation, and then perform an overhead press. Alternatively, the TheraBand can be attached lower at approximately waist level. The athlete will then perform a regular row, move into 90 degrees of shoulder abduction, then 90 degrees of external rotation. So the arm is now in a 90-90 position. And then perform an overhead press. With an additional step, this second method will be slightly more difficult. For this exercise, the athlete should work at a slow pace, focusing on scapular retraction or squeezing the shoulder blades together. We also want to avoid excess shoulder elevation or shrugging of the shoulders. This exercise can be progressed by adding more resistance. To regress, you can decrease the amount of resistance or perform components of the exercise in isolation. Unlike the other strengthening exercises, this row complex will only be performed for 5 repetitions. The second strengthening exercise for day 3 is called sword pulls and is a combination of shoulder flexion and thoracic spine rotation. This exercise is performed in a locked wheelchair. This is also a unilateral exercise that should be performed on both sides. Beginning with the left arm, you will place both hands on the band just in front of the left hip. The left arm is going to remain in place to anchor the band. The right arm will then pull the band to move the arm up and back. As the shoulder flexes, the trunk should open up and rotate towards the right side. The head and neck should remain neutral following the trunk. Throughout this motion, the thumb should be pointed up so as to put the shoulder in a slightly externally rotated position. We do not want the thumb pointing down as this will limit the range of motion and potentially impinge the shoulder. The preceding direction should be reversed when the exercise is performed on the left side. This exercise will most often be progressed or regressed based on the weight of the TheraBand. The final strengthening exercise is the Palaf Press and is performed each day of the program. To set up this exercise, the wheelchair will be facing forward and will be locked, or if in a sports chair, blocked from moving. A band is attached at or just below shoulder level to the side of the athlete. The Palaf Press is performed by grabbing the band with both hands and pulling the band to the center of the chest, while keeping the band in line with the chest 
extend your shoulders and elbows out in front of you. The band is pulling the arms and trunks towards its attachment, and the goal of this exercise is to resist the rotation and maintain facing forward while keeping the arms at midline. Similar to previous exercises, this exercise can be made more or less difficult by changing how close to the attachment you're holding the band or by changing the color of the band. Additionally, this exercise can be progressed by incorporating a rotation away from the anchor point. As an alternative, if core activation is an issue, the athlete can try to draw circles or spell out the letters of the alphabet while maintaining the press position. The next exercise focuses on dynamic stabilization. This exercise will help activate muscles that stabilize the shoulder girdle and make a great warm up before beginning more intense strengthening exercises or sports specific play. This exercise is performed for one minute per arm. This can be progressed by increasing the time of the exercise or by using a heavier ball, although the ball will still need to bounce. The exercise can be regressed by decreasing the time or by using something lighter like an inflatable beach ball. This exercise should fall between 12 to 15 on the RP scale. If the athlete identifies the exercise below a 12, then it is too easy and should be progressed. If they identify it as above a 15, then it is too difficult and should be regressed. This exercise is called protracted circles. The positioning of the wheelchair will mimic that of the previous two exercises. The shoulder is flexed to 90 degrees, the elbow extended, and the scapula or shoulder blade is protracted. This motion will look similar to a forward punch and your shoulder blade should stay forward. Make sure that this motion is coming from the shoulder joint and not from rotation of the trunk. Once in this position, draw small circles with the ball for 30 seconds in the clockwise direction and 30 seconds in the counterclockwise direction with no rest between. This exercise specifically targets the serratus anterior muscle, which helps move and stabilize the shoulder blade. If this muscle is weak, it can contribute to dysfunctional overhead motion. This can be done with a the TheraBand as well. For this, the wheelchair will be facing away from the fence, but the TheraBand will be attached only slightly above shoulder level. Create adequate tension in the band by adjusting the distance between the wheelchair and the fence, and continue with protracted circles. The final set of exercises are sport-specific drills that you can perform before you start playing on the court. Incorporating sport-specific drills is a great way to prepare your body for the demands of the tennis court, such as wheelchair mobility and agility, and proper wheelchair propulsion mechanics. Replicating the demands of wheelchair tennis play during warm-ups can help decrease risk of injury. The first drill is called the fan drill. You will need six cones set up in a half-circle configuration with one cone at the center and five cones surrounding it with equal space in between the five cones. The five cones should be about five to six feet away from the center cone. However, the spacing can be altered in order for the athlete's wheelchair to fit in between each cone. Once the cones are set up, the athlete will be instructed to move around the cones in a figure eight pattern in the direction from the left to right cones of the fan, always returning to the center cone. This is then repeated in the opposite direction, doing figure eights around the cones of the fan right to left, always returning to the center cone. The last drill is called 12 to 9 core pushes. This drill promotes proper wheelchair propulsion mechanics while gradually getting the body ready for explosive wheelchair pushes. The athlete should place their hands at the 12 o'clock position of the chair and move from the 12 to 9 o'clock positions during propulsion. The athlete is instructed to propel forward at 25, 50, 75, and then finally 100% of their max speed along the length of the court. The athlete should start pushing forwards 25% effort down the length of the court. When the athlete reaches the end of the court, the athlete turns around and proceeds to pull backwards along the short end of the court for active recovery. Next, the athlete should push forwards down the opposite side of the court, pushing at the next highest percentage, in this case, 50%. This will repeat until the athlete is pushing at the 100% effort. 